in my previous life as a psychologist, I was a personality psychologist. It was my thing. I published a lot of a lot of papers on on personality um, and development of personality. And and I, I did talk about Jewish personality in my first book. I talked mm. about conscientiousness and emotional intensity as being important. And those are two uh, biological systems related to personality conscientiousness. This is one of the so-called big five. Uh, emotional intensity feeds into neuroticism and other traits. Uh, but it, it's a, like a really intense um, you know, uh, the view of the world where you, you're uh, extremely involved. And I make the point at one point that, that Jewish activism is like a full court press. It's like 24-7 all the time. And and uh, they're going to pull out all the stops and they're going to you know, find all the, all the ways to advance their interests. But conscientiousness, I, I, the other two, I, I want to talk about both. But conscientiousness, it, it means you, you pay attention to detail. You uh, are, are concerned about upward mobility. Um, you can you monitor your, your behavior uh, to ensure compliance with restrictions. So, so uh, you know, in the traditional Jewish community, you have to really pay attention to a lot of different laws, um, and and that would be expected to strengthen the conscientiousness system. It's what I call system specific environmental influences, uh, and uh, and actually a lot of people have theorized that the conscientiousness is one of one of the Jewish personality traits. But the other one, the person is affect intensity. They are prone to intense emotional experience, both positive and negative. Individuals high on the trait of affect intensity, more complex social networks, more complex lives, including multiple, even conflicting goals. They're prone to fast and frequent mood changes and lead to varied and variable emotional lives. Uh, critically, it, it is related to cyclothymia, which is uh, the clinical version related to elation and depression, mm. bipolar affective disorder, neurotic symptoms, somatic complaints, and so on. And so uh, then I go through the the the, uh, the psychological research. I mean, if you go back even to the 19th century, uh, Jewish and Gentile psychiatric workers uh, uh, had the idea that Ashkenazi Jews had relatively sensitive, highly reactive nervous systems thus making them more prone to diagnoses of hysteria, manic depression, neurasthenia. Um, more recently, uh, Gershon and, and Leibovitz, 45% of 22 patients had bipolar patients, had bipolar affective disorder, this is in Israel, compared to 19% in the study of Northern European populations. Within Israel, they cited a study in Hebrew, affective disorders were much more prevalent than the Ashkenazi Jews. So, I, and I go on like that. But um, but the point is that that affect intensity is linked to creativity and the manic phase of the bipolar affective disorder. And so during episodes of mania, the person has a grandiose self-image. Uh, I'm brilliant. I can save the world. If only people would listen to me. So I remember reading something that, that whenever uh, there's a crisis going on, these manic depressive people will call up 911 and uh, the emergency people. And they say, I, I can figure this out, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, but they're also goal-directed activity, obsessively work on a project all night, excessive involvement in pleasurable activity, buying sprees, sexual gratification, racing thoughts. These are uh, the, 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 the behaviors of uh, bipolar disorder, to be clear. It's an affective disorder. disorder that, that mm -hmm. That's pathology. Okay, yeah. uh, but uh, what we're saying is it's more common among Jews. And then what you yeah. have to think about is... Um, Depressive part is just the opposite, first of right. all, that, that a lot of people may be high in emotionality but not meet the criteria uh, of psychopathology. It's easy to see that people with moderately high on positive emotionality, hypomanic or normal, but close to the manic range, would be high achievers. They would work persistently toward goals. They'd be very self-confident, high self-esteem. Such people would gravitate to leadership positions or whatever organization they're in. And it's easy to see that they would become gurus, establishing a devoted following like charismatic rabbis in traditional Jewish communities, like Boas, Freud, Trotsky, and so on, discussed in cultural critique. And I was always struck by this quote from, uh, from uh, where is that? Uh, Albert Lindemann, who was a professor of history, at, was a professor of history at UC Santa Barbara. He says, if one accepts that anti-Semitism was most potently driven by anxiety and fear, as opposed to contempt, 
uh, which is true. Then the extent to which Trotsky became a source of preoccupation with anti-Semites is significant. Here, too, Paul Johnson's words in his book, The History of the Jews, are suggested. He writes of Trotsky's demonic power, the same term revealingly, used repeatedly by others in referring to Zenobia's rhetoric um, or, or Zuritsky's ruthlessness. Um, they were both early Bolsheviks. Trotsky's boundless self-confidence, his notorious arrogance, his sense of superiority were other traits often associated with Jews. Fantasies there were about Trotsky and other Bolsheviks, but there were also realities around which the fantasies grew. And uh, so I, then I have other examples. Uh, one of the examples from Cultural Critique is Max Schachman, who was a Jewish uh, Trotskyist, um, Trotsky, whatever. Uh, you know, he started out as a as a communist, uh, moved over to the sort of neo to a proto neocon. Uh, movement had in, bad, ended up with big influence in the Democratic Party and the labor movement. Um, you know, that really helping to switch the Democratic Party from a party of white Southerners and, and labor and the sort of labor movement to the multicultural party that we see today. Uh, and then uh, I talk about Leo Strauss. Um, for example, uh, Gertrude Himmelfarb says there are many excellent teachers. They have students. Strauss had disciples. The mm. group had a, a, a trappings of a cult. After all, there's a secret teaching, extreme seriousness of those who are cult initiates. He established his role as a guru to worshiping disciples. Now, you just don't see that with Chinese guys. And, and, and the same, or, or white people, the same IQ, at, at least not as commonly. Mm. And uh, Fr Fritz, Fritz Whittle said about, uh, about Freud, he said, the faithful disciples of Freud, this is 1924, regard one another's books as of no account. They recognize no authority but Freud's. They rarely read or quote one another. When they quote, it's from the master, that they may get the pure milk of the word. Um, so that's the idea, that, 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 that those are important personality traits. But I also talk about Jewish aggressiveness. Um, but African tension is very important. It, it really affects the, the, the tone Mm. of uh, of uh, Jewish activism, the intensity of it. And that's very important. I mean, you find uh, um, what the hell happened to that. And what would be the, uh, you know, just keeping in mind that this is part of supposedly a group evolutionary strategy, what would be the, uh, I guess there's an individual benefit perhaps, but there's also a group benefit involved as well. Yeah, I would say that. And, and if you look at traditional Jewish communities, they all were centered around a rabbi who was a charismatic leader. Mm. And, and, and charismatic, and prototypically, think about the uh, the uh, Hasidic Jews, people like uh, Schneerson, um, Menachem Schneerson, and people like that. You know, they've got these people who just worship them. They want to touch the clothes. They want to touch the food that they're reading uh, and, and, and that kind of thing. And uh, so it, it, that's very common in traditional, really, uh, in traditional Jewish communities. It, it's a, a worshiping thing. And uh, so it, it's, uh, it, I think it's a strong tendency in traditional Judaism. Uh, and, uh, but the African test is important. They, you know, it's a pull out all the stops. Massive responses on Jewish issues, which we're seeing now. You see all these billionaires saying they're not going to give any more money to Harvard. They got the president of Penn and the board of regents uh, president uh, fired from their jobs. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, very, uh, very uh, pervasive kind of thing. Um, okay. So, I mean, we, we have, uh, actually, that's pretty good. You mentioned conscientiousness. You mentioned affect intensity. Those are true traits that, as far as I know, Nathan has not brought up, or at least he didn't in the papers that I read. No. Um, uh, the other, I guess, consideration that he has as a potential explanation is the high concentration of Jews in urban areas, you know, and um, essentially that, you know, people living in urban areas have a higher potential to capitalize on their... Um, on their their skills and abilities and networks and so forth and this also is you know in contrast to gentiles who really were not highly concentrated in urban areas uh until very recently that's true i i don't know any 
real data on that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose uh, to some extent, when you look at the uh, New York intellectuals, they were concentrated in uh, urban areas. Um, but you know, a lot of Jewish activism has been in the academic world, uh, which is not necessarily urban. And uh, um, well, you have Vienna, for example. Um, yeah, Frog was in Vienna. London. I mean, a lot of yeah. prominent Jewish intellectual circles come out of these cities. Yeah, they do. Mm. I, I just don't know, you know, to what extent that's uh, important. You know, that you know, maybe I'm wrong about that. I just don't uh, see a strong connection there. But uh, okay. uh, it, it's uh, something to think about. But again, I don't see any compelling reason to think that that is the critical uh, issue there. I mean, I, th I think I think we, you mentioned verbal ability. That's important. Yeah. I think. You know, that, that that is something that is linked to upward mobility uh, in Western societies more than is uh, performance IQ, the more spatial uh, ability. Mm. And Jews are higher on that. I mean, I struck me in my first book I, I read, I, I wrote on, on Judaism, I wrote about IQ, uh, that uh, the difference was there. Uh, Richard Lynn found the same difference. He had a lower average IQ than I did, uh, estimated. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it, you know, it, it's there. The well, other trait, uh, go ahead. Well, uh, yeah, before you get into the next trait, I'll just say that, you know, you and Nathan acknowledge the verbal tilt as well. Um, and at least in my circles, this is well known um, that Jews do have, a, Ashkenazi Jews have an actually a higher than average verbal IQ and a lower than average geospatial. Right. Um, and it really wasn't until recently, you know, again, I'm in the tech world, so it's very common to sort of deride people that are verbally tilted because they're seen as um, mathematically incompetent. Yeah. But it wasn't until recently that someone with a very high geospatial could actually capitalize on it in a tremendous way yeah. by going into tech or going into the sciences or something like that. There weren't a lot of industries where being exceptionally high in geospatial was going to give you an exceptionally high return um, until very recently. Whereas verbal is much older and much more um, generalizable and yeah. um, allows you to climb social hierarchies and do all kinds of other interesting things. Um, I, I think it's also slightly more professions like a legal profession. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanted to make that point about about the verbal is um, it's just extraordinarily beneficial, especially if you're in a social context. Yes, absolutely. And I think I think it's a critical aspect of Jewish uh, upward mobility. And there, uh, you think about you know Jewish activists; they're in a verbal world. Oh, aggressiveness, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, probably linked to that to some extent, but it is different. Uh, and um, it, it, winds up differently on personality uh, um, questionnaires. But uh, basically, that being aggressive and pushy is part of the stereotype. I, 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 you know, going back to the early part of the 20th century, uh, Hans Eysenck uh, claims that, that they are rated more aggressively. And um, you see other people commenting on Jews in the early 20th century and saying that, that, that uh, you know, Edward A. Ross is the, Sociologist at the University of Wisconsin, he says, no other immigrants are as noisy, pushful, pushing and disdainful the rights of others. The Tories claim East European Hebrews feel no reverence for law as such and willing to break any ordinance to find it away. Insurance uh, companies find, uh, scan a Jewish fire risk more closely, the whole so called Jewish lightning. And uh, credit men say the Jewish merchants are also slippery, will get rid of their debts. Um, and uh, Lying for lying, the Democrats have a bad, bad reputation. The uh, readiness of Jews commit perjury. But uh, Albert Lindemann it says the same thing about uh, Jews and perjury in, in Tsarist Russia. And uh, at times, he's been noted by Jews themselves uh, that, uh, that uh, there's a survey of Jews in Baltimore and say two thirds of them responded that Jews are more pushed. I don't think this is the, the greatest data here. But mm. I think it's correct, uh, essentially. Um, and uh, you think about how aggressive 
Jews have been. I mean, uh, going back to the 1920s, Henry Ford commented on how Jews were so energetically trying to get rid of Christianity in the public square and, uh, get you know, getting Christmas car uh, carols out of public schools and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, uh, I say the prototypical example of Jewish aggressiveness is, in my view, the, the uh, attempt to change the, the demographics of America uh, in, in a, uh, transformatively, really, uh, with immigration policy. 